you join me at Destination Triumph. And I was just about to do some, oh, wonder what bike I'm riding today thing. And I've just realized it's in the title, so you know it's that. Um, I know some people are going to say, because I also am a bit more interested in the 900 over the 1200. But if I am going to do a comparison, I need to ride one of them first. So I'm going to do 1200 first, and I'm going to get to the 900. I also want to ride that, I also want to ride that, I also want to ride that, because I haven't ridden the GT, but I also want to get back on a rocket, I also want to ride that, I basically want to ride all of them, and that, and I will, but for the next week, I have this beast, a, oh, Triumph Tiger, 1200 Alpine SE, so a special edition Alpine one. This is the more, more road orientated one. Keyless ignition, all of that jazz. Oh, and it's a big one. Oh, okay, get used to that clutch. Let's go. I am getting blasted in the face by wind. I actually do need to adjust that screen. Now I should point out, because a lot of people get confused about my first rides, the first rides are not reviews. I'm literally just picking the bike up and riding it home. I've got to get used to this bike for a bit. Uh, but it's the very first impressions that I like to try and capture in these videos. Then I keep them for a week, I do a multitude of videos along the way, and at the end of it I do a review. So if you want to see a review, hit the subscribe button, I'd appreciate it. And if you want hitting the like button at the same time, please do that. Uh, right, but first things first. <laughs> Sorry Jess, this is another one. As you all know, I am six foot four, so I'm not a small chap. And this bike uh, is pretty tall, which is, uh, which is nice, to be honest with you bigger bikes like this, the adventure sort of bikes, I've ridden the GS1200 from the, oh, probably 2018, something like that, it might be slightly before then, I can't remember, um, the XR1000, uh, which is obviously in the similar sort of category, I have ridden the new 1050 uh, V-Strom, the old 1000 V-Strom, the 650 V-Strom, there is plenty of room on this bike for me, uh, although it does feel like the, the controls, like the mirrors and everything, are a little bit closer than I'd expect them. I think I personally would just angle them more that way, you know, away from me. I might end up doing that myself <laughs> in the next couple of days, because I really am having to look all the way down there, opposed to just a glance down. I'd expect it to be over there somewhere. Uh, ride, very, very smooth. Very, very, very comfortably smooth. Obviously, that's all fully adjustable through the... Uh, through the dash and your control sticks here, the computer basically. It's also got in-corner ABS and traction control, if I am correct. I will do a bit more research. The thing is with these, uh, with the, the Tigers, it seems like there's quite a few different models and most of the spec differences seem to be electronics and stuff like that on them. If you went for the SE Desert version, uh, that's got spoked rims because it's more road orientated. I know that's got uh, the pro mode in the off-road mode that basically allows you to turn off ABS and, tra ABS and traction control and now we have a bit of open road. It's... Well... Actually, I'm going down there. I want to try this in some twisty roads. I'll go back the other way. Oh no, the storm! Oh, I didn't think about that. Now, don't touch the clutch. I have to keep reminding myself, this has an automatic uh, quick shifter and blipper, so you can go up and down the box without touching the clutch. Okay. Traction control, traction control. What is the traction control on? What is the traction control on? Because I can feel it coming in. You know, this is a fly-by-wire throttle, so it's going to adjust the throttle for you to make sure you're not going to do anything too silly. Uh, to different varying degrees, depending on where you put those modes. 
So the quick shift up is nice and smooth. Down is nice and smooth. I, so I remember on older bikes, you know, a few years ago, the hack quick shifters, they were so clunky. Now, obviously, this bike goes up against a lot of other competitors, uh, and I'm not going to get into, like, you know, which one's the best. I, I pretty much won't ever say that a particular model of bike is the best. Uh, it's a great way of titling a video. It's a very poor way of giving information because, well, I suppose it's for fun. You can just say, in my opinion, that's what I think is best. I understand that my opinion makes absolutely no difference to your situation. So what's right for you, what's wrong for you. So rather than trying to say what's best and what's worst or put something above something else, I tend to just say how I find something. So far, this is very, very nice. Throttle response is absolutely lovely. It's, it's silky smooth. You can feel a little bit of build up and, and let down. You know, you sort of how it's smoothed out that line for you of your throttle response. You can feel that a little bit, but it's not intrusive, it's nice. It fits in with this style of bike. I mean, I'm also extremely comfy and my butt is getting very warm. Now, is that the bike or is that the heated seats? I can flat foot this because I am a giant. In fact, I'm slightly bent knee on this. down that could be a nice place to take a picture in here well as we're stopped let's have a quick look at it so you've got a 17 inch on the rear 19 inch on the front um as i say the desert version of this uh, has spoked rims which are better for off-road this with uh, the cast rims should give a better feel um i mean i ride, ride bikes with cast rims and and spoked and yeah i suppose you can think that nah, i'm not that fast but if you're going off-road, cast rims can break. So, you, you know, you're better off using spokes because they've got a bit of movement in them. Anyway, single-sided swing arm, shaft-driven, as well with a screen which you can adjust the height on. But to be honest with you, uh, I'm so tall that even with that all the way up, it wasn't really doing a huge amount. If anything, it was putting air more into my visor on my helmet. So I was getting a lot of wind noise. Uh, I've put it further down. I actually find it a bit like that. But they have thought about a lot of these things. Obviously, you've got deflectors for wind here, deflectors for wind here. Big old tank, but it's actually nice and thin here and nice and thin here. Though you see, they've scalloped the seat out, that helps with the legs a little bit. Tanks doesn't feel too big when you're riding it, but obviously there is a lot of uh, capacity in here. Obviously, that's plastics that cover the edge. Wind deflectors, brush brush guards of slight bush guards, but then they don't appear to have any metal reinforcements in them. So if the bike goes down, they're well, they're going to protect the levers to a point, but they won't go as far as something with a metal strap in it. And I can hear. Rumbles of thunder in the distance. I better not stay here long. Better take my picture and get going. Oh, there's a little go on these brakes. Yeah, there is very, very little pressure required to get an immense amount of braking out. I just, I dream for having brakes like that on my bikes. You know, I have older bikes with more standard old school type brakes and they have nothing like that. It's so much more precise, predictable. You know, you can trust in the ABS and stuff. I, if, as much as I'm not the biggest fan of electronics on bikes, I like a bike to let me fully ride it. If it doesn't intrude too much and it helps look after people, particularly like new riders and stuff, whereas before a mistake, you know, that would have resulted in low siding or something uh, would have been more expensive. Now it can just be a, a brown trouser moment that the bike helps you with. So I do see the benefit in them, more now than I used to. It's definitely got a very road commanding position. You are higher than everyone else around you. You can see very clearly off of this bike. Well, at my height anyway. I mean, if, if I was shorter, it would be quite different, I'm sure. Is that fuel light on telling me this bike is empty? Because it looks very, very low range zero miles uh yeah it says i have one mile of range and i'm probably about two miles from a petrol station so if i'm uh, if i assume that the bike has a little bit of in reserve just a little bit i should make it i'm now at the top of the hill and there is basically a petrol station at the bottom of the hill so if I'm very careful and just 
coast along as much as I can. I should get there no problems, right? I was looking at the fuel gauge earlier on and I was trying to work out like, where's the marker on it? I can't see any marker on the screen. And there was like, well, maybe the gray's the marker and it goes down and it leaves white behind with like a line. No, 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 the gray is the scale. The blue Nat's dick line at the bottom is the fuel. <laughs> I do not want to be pushing this bike. Of all bikes, I do not want to be pushing this one. Right, come on, little tiger. Sip, sip on that fuel. Sippity sip. I'll tell you something, though. Running out of fuel certainly makes a ride more, more invigorating at slower speeds. There's real risk and danger involved. You might have to push this thing. Right, the, the, the barriers have got to stay up on the train track. The barriers have to stay up on the train track. No, 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 oh no, it's such a short distance, I can't risk it, I'm going to have to sit and wait here. It would appear though we have avoided the storms, which is good and bad, because I want a nice big storm, I want to be able to sit in it, get soaking wet in the garden and watch lightning cool down. See? Oh, that's nice and easy. The heat grip sponge is just a tiny little thing there, and it's three dots, two dots, one dot off. Are the rubbers integrated into the heater grip? How much does that cost to replace? Oh, there's the button for the heated seat. So, no, the heated seats are not on. This bike does actually get quite warm under the cheeks. I should probably shake the tank and see how much is left in it before I fill it to give an idea of how close we came. But I have no fear now, we're gonna make it. I can hear some fuel in there, right at the very bottom, so I don't know how much we actually had left. Um, I'll need that. Might as well leave it in there. Do we have a free pump? Yeah, we do now. Huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. Quite a bit of the support is probably going to get burnt out the back of this bike this month. <laughs> get a bit out of the hose, because you know, over a lifetime. Makes an absolutely huge fortune of difference. Right, put the key back away in my pocket. That's kind of a weird thing to do. Put it back on. What does it say now? Well, now I've put fuel in it, it's exactly the same. So is there something wrong with the fuel gauge on this bike? And I've just been hypermiling for no apparent reason. Of induction sound here. It's like <laughs> I am looking forward to when I feel more confident, when I've ridden this for a few more hours uh, and I can start to sort of chuck it a little bit more. I progressively learn these things. I don't I could jump on a bike and ride it, you know, more aggressively to start with, but I'm more sensible than that. I don't want to scratch it and pay for it. So I incrementally work my way up to that as I get to know the bike and its capabilities. I never get very near its capabilities, to be fair, on the road, nor does anyone, generally. Whoa, hang on a minute. The fuel gauge has suddenly come to life. Maybe the, uh, it just takes a minute for it to readjust. So maybe we really were out of fuel. I'm enjoying this bike. This is going to be a fun week. And if I'm enjoying the, you know, the 1200 this much, the 900, I'm probably going to not want to give back. This bike is definitely quite warm underneath me. Um, now it is an extremely warm and humid day, but I can feel quite a, quite a bit of heat being kicked into the backs of my legs. 
but you can probably fix that by, yes, using the pillion seat. Oh, the breeze now is quite amazing. As is the view for both me and the people behind me. <laughs> yeah, you can ride from up here, it's fine. <laughs> So, just to reiterate, this is not my review of this bike, this is just a first ride where I just ride it and express the things I feel about it and how I discover them. These things can change. There are things which you tend to notice after a few days that you wouldn't notice before, and uh, just a, you know one or two rides as it were, and those things can make or break a bike. So, this is just a preliminary, preliminary, if I can say that word, thing, but so far, really enjoying it and it has done exactly what I thought it probably would do which is I have an impression of a bike that's this big is going to feel a certain way and they never do they never do they always feel much lighter more agile and usable than you think it's going to be right well that was an eventful fun little trip huge thanks to Destination Triumph for lending me the bike uh, and for getting to put any fuel in it because it made an exciting ride that was that was exciting I'm not even mad <laughs> I should have checked myself. It's not their fault. I do have to say, after all the lockdown, to be back out reviewing bikes feels so good. And it is with thanks to the people that watch my videos. Remember to like them. The patron supporters and all the people that support this channel through all the ways that are possible. Links in the description that I get to do this. And I am forever grateful of that. Uh, I know I say it a lot, but I say it because I mean it. And I come from a, a, a philosophy of say what you mean to people because the nicest things that are ever said to people are normally once they're dead. Now, I know that's a very morbid thing to put at the end of this video, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I appreciate you guys, thank you. You mean a lot to me. Uh, this weekend, Reno is off work, so I'm gonna get out on this bike with her on the back, and we're gonna go somewhere, have a bit of fun. She can get some fresh air and get away from the place, because as I say, she's been on lockdown for, for a while. But she works from home now, so it's like, uh, without her bike working, she can't really go anywhere and do anything. But I am working on that. Thank you, buddy. What's the suspension like? Wow, that... <laughs> that definitely lifted off the ground a bit. So until the next one... Oh, so until the next one, I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to see future videos. This channel is made possible by the support of the audience. Please consider joining my Patreon to get early access to videos, questions answered in the monthly Q&A, your name on screen, and some exclusive content, all for as little as a dollar a month. You can also check out the links in the description to my merch and other ways to directly support the channel. Thanks for watching.